Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on troubleshooting copper wire networks, part one. Today I'm going to give you a summary of the troubleshooting methodology, and then we're going to move on to common copper wire problems. With that, let's go ahead and begin this session. I'm going to begin with a summary of the troubleshooting methodology. CompTIA recommends a seven-step troubleshooting methodology. Step one is to identify the problem. A mistake in identifying the problem can negate the rest of the steps. And remember, the problem is not the symptom. The problem what is causing the symptom to occur. Step two, establish a theory of probable cause. Step three, test the theory of probable cause. Once you have tested the theory of probable cause, move on to step four. Establish a plan of action to resolve the problem. Step five is implement the solution or escalate as necessary. Step six is to verify full system functionality. And your last step, step seven, is to document findings, actions, and outcomes. And there we have a brief review of the seven-step troubleshooting methodology. With that, let's move on to common copper wire problems. First up is electromagnetic interference, or EMI, and radio frequency interference, or RFI. Because copper wire transmissions are electrical in nature, their electrical signals can degrade by sources of either EMI or RFI. Sources of interference may corrupt the network signal leading to a loss of communication or poor communication between end nodes. There are several possible sources of EMI and RFI. These include other electrical wires. Network cables should be kept separate from normal electrical runs and, if possible, network cabling should always cross electrical wires at a 90 degree angle never run network cables right alongside the normal electrical run as the probability of interference will greatly increase. EMI and RFI can also be caused by other electrical components. Manufacturing environments often have a lot of EMI and RFI present. Another major source of interference is fluorescent lights. Interference problems can often be identified by when they occur. For instance, does the problem only happen when somebody turns on all the lights? The solution may be to move from UTP to STP or to reroute the network cables to avoid the source of the EMI or RFI. All copper wire networks have distance limitations. And by that, all network transmission media experience attenuation, which is a loss of signal strength over distance. This can lead to poor communication or loss of communication between end nodes. A decibel logarithmic scale is used to measure the amount of acceptable and unacceptable attenuation. As network transmission speeds increase, the attenuation also increases as a ratio of signal to signal loss. Possible attenuation issues can be identified when a cable cannot handle the higher transmission speeds for which it is rated. A cable certifier or TDR will usually identify this problem. Possible solutions are to install a network switch to boost the signal strength or to reroute the network run to create a shorter run of cable. Then there's crosstalk. Even with the steps taken to reduce it, all cables experience crosstalk between the pairs, which can lead to intermittent or constant transmission issues. More crosstalk is present at the near end, where the transmissions originate, than at the far end, where the transmissions are received. As network transmission speeds increase, the opportunity for crosstalk increases. A good cable certifier or TDR will identify the problem. Possible solutions include replacing the network run with cable rated for a higher transmission speed, replacing the cables with one that has better shielding, or reducing the transmission rate of the network. Bad connectors are also a common problem on copper wire networks. Once a good cable is in use, the end connector may still become broken. 
especially after repeated use, leading to a loss in connectivity. In particular, this can happen on RJ45s. The locking tab can be easily broken, leading to a loose connection or creating an open connection. A cable tester may identify this problem as an open connection, but a thorough inspection of the cable ends can help to identify the problem. The solution is to replace the bad connector with a good one with your crimper. Then there are bad cables. Cables can go bad, especially if they are in places susceptible to damage, leading to loss in connectivity or poor network communication. A cable tester can be used to identify the problem as either an open connection or a short. An open connection indicates a broken wire. A short indicates an electrical signal traveling down an unintended path, as in down the wrong wire. The solution is to replace the bad network cable. That concludes this session on troubleshooting copper wire networks part one. I did a summary of the troubleshooting methodology and then I concluded with some common copper wire problems. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I look forward to doing another one.